soundcheck.network The new online magazine Here's top 20 of the albums of the year. We like it so much. You made a great debut, fantastic debut. Does it make you feel worry about the next step? You're already in a very high ranking. Um, absolutely. I mean, we put a lot of energy into making this album, into making sure that it did have that feeling that you're talking about of this life. Um, I mean, we've all made many albums before with different bands, and we listen to so many things, and it's like, this has to, this can't just be some album, this has to have life, and it's gonna sound a certain way, and nothing can be, everything has to be perfect about it for what we want it to be, and it has to hit us a certain way. So, to get to that point, we couldn't even look ahead, we just had to focus on getting there, because it took everything from us to do that. And then now to play live, the same thing. It's taking everything from us to make that what we want it to be. And as we start writing, which we have for our next release, or whatever we have next, it's that same thing. Now, knowing that we have this previous thing there, I think, yeah, there is going to be a challenge that we welcome to keep the liveliness, to keep that energy there that's that's what we're about so yes it's going to take a lot and it's going to be difficult but that's what we're here to do that's our actual job as a band to pull that out of ourselves on the other hand since we have created it and we kind of have defined ourselves not just to the world but to ourselves there are some things that may flow even easier so it's kind of the way that i describe how i play guitar and do vocals it's just like all of the technical parts of it have to be so muscle memory and just done so that it can be about expressing the emotion of it. And I think if there's genuine emotion and we're true to ourselves and we're completely devoted to heavy metal and rock and roll and living life that's true, I think our own standards will not allow us to do anything that isn't as good. Now, maybe somebody listens to the next thing that we do and says, oh, I like the first one better. That's fine, but it's going to be good. I mean, we're not going to, we're not going to do something that is bad as our next thing musically. Up the hammers! It's crazy that we are here. Medalists, thank you. Tonight, tonight we're going to play a lot of rival, okay? Yeah! 
you would want to separate singer singing and the guitarist uh, influences. Yeah, yeah, I think they are kind of separate influences. How, like we did feel that ultimately a great heavy metal band needs to have powerful, very forward vocals, and we came from a standpoint where we were skilled at guitar, drums, and bass, but vocals were sort of a new pursuit for me. So, from a musical standpoint, I mean, Merciful Fate is definitely a huge influence, but on tour singing. So, Merciful Fate, just the darkness, the atmosphere, and the musicianship, the attitude and power of bands like Manowar, Judas Priest, some of the sound of Iron Maiden maybe, but that's so too guitar based. I think our lyrics are very different than that. From a musical standpoint, I think when when we really started the band, I was listening to a lot of Scorpions, except Manowar was always a thing, Merciful Fate, King Diamond, always Judas Priest, Jejek, our drummer, was listening, and I were listening to ZZ Top, stuff like Kiss as well. And all these bands have this like bigness about them, this like sort of massive presentation. And there aren't bands nowadays that really can do that. We're coming from a standpoint of this new band with, you know, nobody knows us. I, I don't sing like Rob Halford or anything like that, so we can't come out crazy. But we knew we needed to have that sort of energy to be what we wanted. That's the music that gets us all going. And we had to do it in the way that we could, using what we have. Um, so those were huge influences. But then... I think we've just been obsessed also with a lot of like post-punk goth types of music as well, like Susie and the Banshees and Fields of the Nephilim and just all these other bands. And it's like, this energy is just really good too. And to me, it sort of relates to metal through stuff like King Diamond and Merciful Fate, which maybe they're not influenced, but it's this dark gothic energy there too. And I felt like we could pull that in and we all felt that way. So. It's interesting because we're pulling from a, a lot of places. I think it's a very cohesive sound that we do. I don't think we sound like we're all over the place. And I think we, like the essence of true heavy metal is there, but it's also something that we're not afraid to embrace like the pop elements that we have. Like we were always intentional about that, that we're going to have hooks and you know we're not afraid to be accessible, but as long as we're true to ourselves. So yeah, really these classic bands are the influence. And there's so many imitators of these classic bands, so we didn't want to be that. And we didn't want to be influenced by imitators. We're influenced by the greats, but not just the greats, like the greatness of them. Like what is it that is making this so good to us? And we tried to find that. When we started off as a band, we were just covering songs. We covered Manowar songs, Venom, Witchfinder General, Judas Priest, just to kind of really get comfortable with how great music that we've always loved really is physically done, just so we were in that mindset. So when we started to write our own music, we were thinking like that. I've seen many clips uh, from the live shows you're giving and um, though in the albums you sound 60% fragile and melodic and 40% dynamic, on the stage it is reversing the percentage. That is 
true to some extent. I, I agree with that to some degree. I think when we play live, by necessity, it's raw. I mean, in the studio, you know, I'll sometimes do multiple guitar trucks. I'll do a guitar harmony, but we have one guitar live or a three piece. And that's a drastic move to have another guitarist to, to do the harmony. So it's like, okay, I'm going to take the one thing I can do on guitar out of all this and make that the one thing live. And same with the vocals. There could be a lot of vocal harmonies. Sometimes we have them, sometimes we don't. We just do what's going to sound good and feel right at any given time. So I think it's more raw and more energetic live. And for that to work, we need to have this power behind it. We can't, we can't just take things away and expect it to be good. We have to give it something else. Because why would you go see the show? You could listen to the album at home. There has to be this new energy to it. So I, I do think, yeah, I mean, it's a little more, it's, it's going to come across as more atmospheric and melodic probably on, this, on the album versus live where there's more energy, I think. <laughs> I suppose both uh, as a vocalist and as a guitarist. So my question is, is there any chance we see you get, um, not for the live shows, mainly for the, uh, the, the songwriting, a, a second guitarist? I've, I've considered it, but I don't want this to sound like um, I have a big ego or anything. I just don't know anyone that can play along with me that is available, essentially. Um, I like they have to be rhythmically and vibe and everything as you know at the level that we do and available and interested to do it I don't know who that person would be I'd be open to it um, but they would have to like we demand a lot of ourselves and they would have to live up to that it could open up a huge possibility to do that we don't really like guitar solos very much so we're not looking we would never look for someone to do solos but to make the sound, you know, more what we want, you know, what the real essence of the band is, it's something we'd be open to, but that's a big decision, so it would have to really matter. And we can't just have anybody do it. It would have to be somebody special. cover on the ladder driver he said that's the balls of uh, balls to the wall of accept of our era accept is definitely a huge influence to us um, I think for me it, it was one of the primary influences when the album was coming together was accept for sure um, in fact our song nylon nights the bridge part is like directly inspired by Neon Knights by Accept. Um, the cover, I that we came up with on our own, and that was like that was really hard for us to get to. It wasn't influenced by any other band. We tried to do something that we hadn't seen in any band. Um, it was we didn't even like we did a photo shoot, and we didn't even think, oh, this is the photo for the cover of the album. But after we had all these photos, we were just looking at them in different ways and saying, maybe, maybe this piece of this photo is the cover. And we had to create the atmosphere to it. We had to, it wasn't just a photo. It's like the aura of it, like the, the type of colors and that sort of thing. It's just, it's hard for us to get our visual images together for the band because we don't want something that's bland but we also don't want something that's 
contradictory to the music. So we just tried to be very original with it, with, with the cover. You are doing good work. Thank you. Another point that you are different, since we talked about the influences and the sound, is the, the, the lyric uh, themes that you choose to, uh, for your songs. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, you know, with, with our lyrics, I mean, you know, with that song, with Nylon Nights and with the video, what we were trying to portray is kind of like, okay, there's a protagonist, a main character doing sex work and she's kind of unsure of herself at first, kind of, you know, not, things don't seem to be going well, and then it gets bad, and then she kind of, we try to imply with this like internal heavy metal power, she kind of just manifests her power and then becomes able to assert herself and do it better, do everything better, and just kind of have control of the situation and thrives in the situation so it's very important to us also to like just show like just the heavy metal power like manifesting and like you know the personal internal transformation of claiming one's own power type of thing um yeah the lyrics are a little bit different for the most part lyrics something or something that took us a really long time it took me a really long time to to get for the band because even if it's a short song, if it's, I mean, it's not like it's pages and pages, but the meaning there has to, it has to mean something while also fitting with the music. So starting the band, it's like, what am I going to write lyrics about? Well, it's like I have to write lyrics about living life. And I think I live a kind of different life than a lot of people writing lyrics for metal bands. So it's like, this is going to, this should be written about kind of thing. Um, we try not to write, I mean, not that we try not to, we don't write anything, we don't write about make-believe stuff or fantasies or, or, you know, just, it's all, it has to have this, like, presence of, of realness to it, and that's, that's absolutely a part of the lyrics, and I think that's unfortunately lacking in a lot of heavy metal. Um, I like some of the escapism sometimes, but for us, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work unless we have real intense lyrics to go along with everything else. <laughs> When I say it's not fantasy, you know, there are times where I reference, you know, even medieval imagery or like, you know, like some esoteric, like spiritual stuff that doesn't necessarily, isn't based in physical reality so much as it's based in, you know, allegories and metaphors and that sort of thing. That'll be there, but it's about reality. It's about experiences that I live. So, um, it's very important for us. Like we're not going, if we were to ever have a song where it's telling a story of something that happened in the past, I mean, the, the meaning is going to have to burst out of it in a way that's very present, that relates to a person now kind of thing. <laughs> Some details about the name, the, the pick of the name, the Sonia. It's 
not as exciting as uh, maybe someone would want to think. I know we came up with it. Uh, me and the drummer, we were in our old band. We were in Prague, Czech Republic, playing a black metal fest. And backstage, we came up with the name because it just came to us then. We were kind of discussing it back there and landed on that. It's like, that would be a good name. And it just, we just thought it fit the sound of the music. It, it fit the aura and the vibe of what we try to do. I think personally to me, the way that it hits me, the name, is that it, it's this feminine, like warrior, but beautiful type of indication. That's just, it's not specific. It's just, it's supposed to elicit a feeling. Lado Liver represents uh, to my ears everything that heavy metal once was and I would like uh, it to be today, sad and aggressive, full of emotion and at the same time uh, revolutionary. Do you think that heavy metal still has the potential to represent the youth and the working class people, I mean, besides Sonia? Or Absolutely. I mean, I think it's it seems disconnected, I think, a lot from from what you're saying from youth and working class people in some ways it seems like it's not related it doesn't connect as much at least in the US and you know things are different in different places but it's like it's popular but it's not potent it doesn't have the same thing I mean for me it always has but new bands making music I expect more out of them I expect originality I expect danger I expect I expect not rehashing stuff, not just going with old mentalities, but I expect real spirit and keeping it real and not like, it's hard because heavy metal, it's like we don't want to go too far away from what makes it good, but we also don't want to get stale with doing the same stuff over and over again. I mean, it's an interesting style of music in that bands that are older and have been around are the ones we love and respect and newer bands I think take time to win us over um, with Sonia of course we one of my main goals is to set an example for people to start new bands and to make stuff that has that spirit and is new and is fresh um, it's gonna require you know a high level of creativity and ability for other people starting bands but that's what I want to see I think it's I hope it's possible because that's what I want I mean it's almost pointless if I'm glad that people like us and, and are acknowledging us as being good. I mean, that's great because we want to play and we bring real heavy metal spirit, but I don't want to be the only ones doing it. And there are some other good bands that are new. I want there to be, I want us all to be fighting to get that real energy going in it because that's what it's about. I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's a fuel of life, essentially. <laughs> Uh, I will combine the next question. 
Uh, do you know any bads from Greece or the scene here? Anything going on? I mean, there's a lot of good bands in Philly. There's not a ton of straight up heavy metal bands in Philly. Um, there's a lot of like, sort of like punk bands, death metal bands, black metal bands, even grindcore. Um, they're all good in their own ways. Um, we feel ourselves that we're kind of separate from a lot of the stuff. My favorite band from the Philadelphia area right now is Ruby the Hatchet, which is kind of like this rock band that has heavy metal elements. Um, in terms of Greek bands, I love, I've always loved Necromantia. Um, Rotting Christ is great, you know, I, I just love old black metal stuff especially. Um, those are kind of my main, actually, Zemael is a good band too. Um, so yeah, really stuff on the more black metal side is what I know from Greece. Times and uh, are marching uh, full uh, speed towards a new dark ages, despite uh, the technological revolution happening around us. Here in Greece, basic human and labor rights uh, that we took for granted, their policies, policies that we want to overturn them. How are things in the U.S.? Things are just as bad, if not worse. I mean, I'm sure we're all dealing with it. Those in power. There's all this new technology, there's all these new innovations in society, but they're, they don't exist and they're not developed to help people, to help humanity. They are developed to assert and continue the dominance of the ruling class. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. All this technology that comes out, it's like, oh, here it is, play with this new thing, but it, it just ends up controlling us. I mean, that's that's what it is. Like, the inform like social media is basically just giving them access to our innermost thoughts. And then every piece of technology that comes to us is just to make things, there are efficiencies for us, but there are more efficiencies for the ruling class. So it's a shame because we want to think, oh, as things innovate and develop in society, that benefits everybody. But it benef like we could have a situation with, if everybody was just trying to create a good society for each other where that was the case. But no, it's about asserting dominance if you're the ruling class and making us their slaves, essentially, in different tiers of that. It seems pretty obvious to me. I think it seems pretty obvious to other people too. And how do we fight it? Um, I don't know. I mean, everybody fights it their way. One of the main ways that I do it is by trying to like create that fire inside somebody through music and just connecting with people. Um, but, you know, might makes right, essentially, and those in power are going to use technology against us, always. Not against us, but just to control us, which is against us. Of our 
course, you're playing, uh, you're uh, playing, uh, you're headlining the warm-up night of the uh, Up the Hammers Festival. Uh, okay, I won't ask how do you feel, but have you heard anything about the Greek audience? Yeah, um, I know the. I mean, the Greek audience is incredibly heavy metal, um, and it's like truly an honor to be asked to be playing in front of them tonight. And just the excitement that's building inside me and my bandmates is just intense. We're very excited. We did some shows um, to warm up in Germany because we wanted to come here like on fire. We didn't want to just come here and have any obstacle to us being able to deliver the real Sonia to everybody. So we're just very excited. Um, the Greek fans, I've played in Athens once before, but it wasn't heavy metal. It was different. I'm very excited and I can't wait to experience it together with everybody. Um, it's, it'll be a bit of a new experience and it's, it's, it's what it's all about, honestly. Soundcheck.network The new online magazine.